Welcome to Guest Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 8.7. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. So, given this circuit over here, we are asked to find V of T and VR of T for time greater than zero, right? So, that is what we have. And let's start. Time less than zero. We have this circuit basically. So this switching action takes place at t is equal to zero. And therefore we have this section over here, which we assume to have reached steady state. And therefore this will be an open circuit. Now this open circuit is in parallel with this two ohm resistor. And therefore to find the initial voltage, which is across this capacitor, you can just find the voltage across this resistor because they're actually in parallel, right? So we're going to say 18, we're going to do voltage division to find that. So this is 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, we just divide that, 6. And therefore the initial voltage across the capacitor is 12 volts. Now looking at the inductor over here, the initial inductor current at time less than 0 is 0 because there isn't any current flowing because this circuit is not closed for that time. So I just before zero, which is equals to I just after zero, is equals to zero amperes. Now moving on to time greater than zero, or just at time equals to zero, let's just say time greater than zero. This is when this switch actually moves to this part and we discard this section of the circuit and only look at this part, right? So the circuit which we now have looks something like this. Right. And we have 15 volts over here. Good. So we know for sure that we have a current in there, or in whatever direction, we assume to be it to be going through the positive direction of this using the passive sign convention or whichever way is fine. But we know for sure that I is equals to C, I is equals to C dV over dt. And we're interested in finding this, V of t. And this in initial condition of dV at zero of dt is going to help us to solve that problem. So doing this, we're going to say it's equals to I of zero, which is that, divided by C, and we know our I of zero to be zero. And therefore, this is zero volts per second, right? After finding that, we're going to find the kind of response which we expect from this circuit over here. So let's do that on this side by finding the damping factor as well as the resonant frequency. So to find the damping factor for a series RLC, we use this formula, which is R divided by 2L. Substituting the R, which we have, which is 10, and substituting the inductor value, which is over there, it's going to be, so that is going to be L is 2.5, and R is 10, so that would be 4 divided by this 2, which is going to be 2, right, 2 napers per second. And here we have 1 divided by square root of RC. Now RC is 1 over 40, and our L is that value. So just punch that into your calculator and you should get a value of four radians per second. Now you'll notice that your damping factor is less than your omega zero, which means we expect an underdamped response. Expect an underdamped response. And the general form of an underdamped response looks something like this. Right. So now that we have that, we can use our initial conditions V of zero and dV of a dt of zero to actually find the coefficients of all of these and to satisfy this particular equation. So I already have this and the t's are just time. So all we have to find is a1, a2, and these. So we can find our omega d's from finding the roots of the characteristic equation. Right. 
So doing this, you should find your S1 and your S2 to have values. So you're gonna you're gonna substitute your damping factor as well as all the other things which you see, which is your resonant frequency over here. And you should find a value of negative two plus or minus j two square root of three, right? This is the value which you expect for both of your roots. So one of them is negative two plus j two square root of three, and the other is negative two subtract the same value. And now you can actually transfer this into your general form of your of your underdamped response. So it's going to be e to the negative. So your damping factor is two negative two t. And you're going to have your a one cosine of this value over here, which is two square root of three t. Then you're going to have plus a two sine 2 square root of 3 t, which is over here. So this is our general form, and all that's left for us is to find these coefficients. So 2 square root of 3 is approximately equals to 3.464, right? So that, that is the approximation, or that is our rounding, which we found after trying to simplify or trying to transform that. And let's use our initial conditions in this formula to actually find the coefficients of a1 and a2. So we know for sure that v of 0, which we found over here, is 12. So substituting 0 over there, we're going to have 1. Substituting 0 over there, we're going to have 1. So we're going to have a1. Substituting 0 over there, we're going to have 0. And therefore, our a1 is equal to, so let's see what we're going to have here. We're going to have the a1, a1. Right, so you're gonna have a one, but wait. Before we even get to that point, don't forget that we are now looking at the step response of a series RLC. We have essentially omitted this, or we've essentially ignored its effect on our final value, which is wrong. So what you what you should do is to factor this into your final solution. So this is fine, but this is only for the transient part of your response. We are now interested in the total response of our circuit, and therefore we should factor in this source. So for a total response, you have your final value, your steady state value, and you have your so this is our final value, steady state value, and you have your transient value. So this is our transient value, which is going to die out soon. We now have to add our steady state value, which is 15. So what we're doing is fine, but let's add the 15. So V of 0 is equal to 15. Substituting 0 here should give you 1. And here it should give you 1 as well, but here it should give you 0. So you're going to have 15 plus A1. It goes to your value of 12, which we found before, right? So just so we are on the same page, let me just repeat that. So our total response is going to be the voltage source value of 15 plus our transient response, which looks something like this. It's 3. Point, what's this? 3.464, right? Plus A2. Sign 3.464. Right? And now from all of this, we just want to find a1 and a2 using our initial conditions. So first we're going to find a1, which is 12 subtract 15, and therefore our a1. We found our a1 to be negative 3. Moving on to the second initial condition, which is dv over dt at time 0. So differentiating this or differentiating the total response of i over here. This is going to be zero after differentiating that. So dv over dt, this is going to be zero. Then differentiating that, you're going to have negative two e to the that. And then you're going to have everything in the brackets as it is using the product rule. So everything stays as it is. And for the second time, you're going to say this stays as it is. And we're going to differentiate what's inside the brackets. And therefore, we're going to have negative 3.464 a1 sine out of that. So let me just transfer all of this to, okay, let me just erase. So I'm just going to erase this part just so I have space for my derivative. 
So dv of dt is equal to zero plus, so you're gonna differentiate this first, then leave everything in the brackets, then leave this, and then differentiate everything that's in the brackets. That is the product rule, I think. So zero, and I'm gonna have negative two e to the minus two, then I'm gonna have a one, cosine 3.464, then I'm gonna have plus a two, sine 3.464, close brackets. Then we're gonna leave this as it is. Gonna differentiate everything that's inside. All right, then we're gonna have no. gonna have that. Now, all that's left is to substitute zero wherever we see t. So substituting zero over there, we're gonna have negative two, negative two over there, then we're gonna have zero here. We're gonna have one, actually, multiply by, by that. So we're gonna have a one. And here, we're gonna have zero. Then here, we're gonna have one, multiply by, this is gonna be zero, and this is gonna be one, right? So after that is one, we're gonna have something like this. And all of this is gonna be equated to the value of dv over dt at time zero, which we found to be zero, right? So doing that quickly, we're gonna have, and we know the value of a1, we found previously to be negative three. So negative three multiplied by negative two is gonna be six. So you're gonna have six plus 3.464, a2 equals to zero. So taking this to the other side of the equal sign and dividing by 3.464, our a2 is therefore going to be negative 1.7321. Now, all that's left is now to pack all of this into our formula, our general formula for the total response. And the answer which you should get is V of t is equal to 15, subtract 1.7321 sine 3.464t added to 3 cosine 3.464t and all of that is multiplied by e to the minus 2t and this, this is in volts. So this is the first part of the question. We're now going to move on to the second part of the question which is finding vr of t. So after finding our v of t which is associated with this element over here which is our capacitor you see that the same current flows through all of the elements, and therefore we can use Ohm's law and say V is equal to IR. So the inductor current is the same as the current through this resistor, right? So this is VR of T. So VR of T is therefore equals to the inductor current, which you can find as C dV over dT multiplied by your value for, what's this? The value for the resistor value, right? So the value of the resistor multiplied by what you get which, when you differentiate this and multiply, not forgetting to multiply by C. So your C is, your C is one over 40 and you have 10 over here. So that's gonna be one over four. So one over four of the derivative of D over T or uh, DV over DT should give you your VR of t. So I'm going to give this to you as a homework. Just differentiate this answer, which we found over here. And your final value for vr of t, expect that to look something like this. It should be 3.464 e to the minus 2t multiplied by sine 3.464 T and that should be in volts. So once again, to find VR of T, just multiply one over four by the derivative of V of T.